Welcome back to our Stevenish Marathon over here, where I've ranked a few of his projects already, and it's time we finish off with his solo stuff. Now, I think I speak for all Steven fans when I say that we all miss Porcupine Tree, and we would love to get some new music for them. But he has put out some pretty good stuff that rivals even them in his solo career. Or maybe just a couple albums, but in any case, with the release of his brand new album, The Future Bites, which has finally arrived from overseas, which is why it took so goddamn long to get this video done, uh, let's rank all six of them, shall we? So, without further ado, let's finish off Stephen Wilson. And pretty easily in last place is gonna be To The Bone. Now, I wouldn't really call it bad, not really, but it definitely doesn't have a lot going for it. I mean, I absolutely love Pariah. Um, yes, Josh, I like Pariah. Not you, Josh. Not not you, Patrick. Other Josh. Um, I like Pariah. It's fun. It's a fun song, even though you know it's uh, he uh, has a lot of Steven on it. You know, doesn't he's tired of Facebook and everything. But um, yeah, I like the song. Uh, per permenting, permenting. I think it was called per permanate. Fuck. Per permanating yeah permanating has some stuff on it like too there's just something about it that I just I don't know sure it's more poppy but yo I've, I've heard him do it before and it's been great he's done it before there's even still some rocking moments in it most notably in the title track overall if I compacted this his solo stuff porcupine tree and blackfield into one video to the bone would still be on the bottom of the list. So this may surprise some of you that I have insurgentes, insurgent, insurgentes, insurg insurgentes, uh, however you say it, the first one, uh, at number five. Uh, now, to be clear, there's a pretty big jump from To The Bone, which is like, here and then you know you got like this one like up here pretty big jump between them um but besides a few standouts like you know obviously harmony kareen i also like twilight coda and get all you deserve is a pretty evil ass sounding song a lot of it is reminiscent of like the old porcupine tree elms you know like sky move sideways and signify which if you remember were pretty low on that list so naturally this one reminds me of those, so this one is pretty low in this one too, but it's still solid enough where I would call it way better than To The Bone. Yeah. Yep. The Future Bites is coming in at number four. Look, man, if you, if any of you watching this, uh, totally hate this album and think it's just trash uh which some people were saying in the comments of my review or um i get it i'm not gonna sit here and be like what you guys don't like this album how could you not it's like perfection no dude i get it this is very 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 far out there for for him and uh is very just such a long stretch away from like what people liked about him but honestly I kind of like it I kind of like it I don't know I don't know what to tell you um, but you know basically to summarize what I said in my future bites review this one feels like what he started into the bone and just fine-tuned it a little more or a lot more some songs I don't care for too much like 12 things I forgot and Eminent Sleaze, which I don't like, uh, you know, in my review I was like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of good, but no. I don't like Eminent Sleaze pretty much at all. Um, but some songs like King Ghost, Man of the People, Follower, and Personal Shopper are going to keep me coming back to this one every once in a while. Grace for Drowning is an album I very, very often overlook. You know, because usually if I listen to Steven's solo stuff, it's going to be the two elms above it. But this one, 
still has some great stuff on it. No Part of Me is pretty jamming. Raider 2, I hear just little bits and pieces uh, that he would later perfect in his next release, which, man, we'll get to that one in a second. But for now, yeah, I think Disc 1 is uh, it's a lot cleaner than Disc 2, I think. Lots of piano, and then Disc 2 has the, like, the more proggy side of him. Great album, would recommend. Uh, I gotta stop sleeping on this one. Hand cannot erase. This is the Stephen album of my generation. It was the first one to come out after I started listening to him, and I think it still holds up. Three years older, just has some major Rush vibes, and fucking I love Rush, so hell yeah, give me more of that stuff. Um, the ending, yo, the ending, like the last half of Ancestral. Holy shit. I mean... We're probably never going to get a Steven Elm like this again. I don't see him ever going back to like the more guitar-heavy and heavy metal, heavy-ish uh, side of music. So this is pretty much like the last of its kind. Seriously, yeah, the last half of Ancestral is just what a great way to go out. But then, yeah, also the title track of the album is that more poppy side of Steven I mentioned earlier that I liked. And, you know, I think one of the reasons these top two albums work so much is because you have... Guthrie Govan and Marco Miniman on them. And those two are masters at what they do. And you throw them into this cocktail with Steven Wilson and, uh, what's his name, Theo Travis. I um, mean, he's not really on this one, but, you know, the number one album on this list. And, uh, who was it, Nick Beggs. Uh, I forgot the keyboard guy. But, you know, they're all really good. Man, you put them together, man, you got a solid-ass album. And then, oh man, you got Regret Number 9 with those sick-ass solos. The, the music video for Routine, which if you watch that and you aren't in tears by the end of it, you have no soul. But then, you know, there's some weird tracks like Perfect Life, which is just kind of goofy. Uh, and that's about it, you know. Everything else is just kind of interludes. and Overall, a solid-ass album, and like I said earlier, the end of an era. And side note, uh, yeah, this is the only Steven shirt I happen to own, and um, I'm sure you noticed the uh, the bleach stains all over it. Uh, bleach would ruin most shirts, but uh, since <laughs> hand cut and erased is kind of like a painting, uh, it kind of just looks like part of the design. Like someone took a paintbrush and just splatted all over the shirt. Yeah, I think the bleach actually enhanced the shirt, which is pretty cool. Uh, Then we got the masterpiece, masterpiece, the raven that refused to sing. Steven, and more specifically this album, currently holds the record for the fastest time I fell in love with an artist. Luminal is the first song I heard from him, and shout outs to my old homies Josh and Greg for introducing me to this and the other two million artists I, li I like. Um, yeah, one day, somewhere before Hand Can I Race even came out, they played it in the car. They're like, here, check out this song. And I shit you not, maybe 10 seconds in, as soon as like the fill happens and then that bass kicks in, I was immediately hooked. It took 10 seconds for me to want to hear this man's entire music catalog. And if that's not enough, Holy Drinker has perhaps my favorite finale to any song ever. I mean, that shit goes harder than trying to listen to Lulu all the way through and not wanting to die. Yeah, this album is just in pieces now. And then, oh my lord, the title track. Steven himself has said that that's his best song. That he's ever written. And honestly, I don't think I can disagree with that. And those three tracks alone put this album at number one. But then you can't forget about Drive Home. Just more sad, emotional Steven music. Pin Drop is just like another extension of that. 
And then the watchmaker, to be honest, that one never really grabbed me as much, but still a great piece. Overall, man, what a record this is. I honestly cannot decide if I like The Raven more or Fear of a Blank Planet more. These two albums are straight masterpieces, and I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of these. Seriously, this is the reason why I didn't put Steven and Porcupine Tree together. Because I would rather shoot myself than try to pick between one of these two albums. It's like, do I want Gavin or do I want Marco? Okay? Can't decide. Can't decide. Brain aneurysm! Okay. Now I can finally put Steven to rest for a while. Uh, be sure to drop your list down below in the comments. Um, and this is my last ranking until we hit our one year anniversary. Holy shit, that's right. In just under two weeks, it will be one year since I've been making videos. And I've got a little thing planned. Uh, very excited for it. Um, I, I think it's the only thing I can do that really makes sense to do on this channel for a one year anniversary celebration. So uh, until then, someone think of a catch line for me to do at the end of every video. Because every time, every fucking video I do, I say I need to think of something and then I forget. I forget immediately to think of one. Maybe one day I'll have one, but until then, I'm going to leave y'all with that. So, peace out.